Good morning, everyone. Um, last week, um, we saw with our condition of our heart and with the activities we do, we can be drawn away from God and can be more of a Pharisee. So today we are going to look in the opposite direction. You know, we are going to look at the life situation and how we can draw closer to God. Now, we might be um, battling some sin, temptation, uh, which we are not able to overcome, or we might be going through a tough choice and we are questioning God and we are powerless, right? But the good news is if you let, God can fight this battle for you and you can draw closer to God in this difficult times. So let's start with a word of prayer. Lord, we come before you, Father. We submit this time at your feet, Father. Lord, everyone who is here is your child, Father. Lord, and we long to hear from you, Father. Lord, speak to each one of us according to your will and according to our needs, Father. Lord, as the psalmist prayed, may the words of my mouth and meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. My rock, my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. One second. So the topic that I believe God gave me for this week is the battle belongs to the Lord. You know, um, one thing that we don't realize, right, is like we go to church, we read God's word, and we are we know about evil, but we lack to understand that right now, as of this very moment, we are in a war. And as long as we are unaware of this, oblivious of this, the Satan has an upper hand because scripture says, you know, that um, uh, in Ephesians 6, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of darkness, you know, against the spiritual forces in heavenly realm. So this is an ongoing thing. And if you don't acknowledge this, we probably are kind of um, on a disadvantage because we don't know that what we are up against. So we kind of don't have a battle plan in this area. You know, um, so for me, like over the time, like when I shared last time that I became self-righteous yes. you know, and what I thought was, I'm not harming anyone, you know, I'm a good human being. I go to church, I read God's word, um, and I don't commit any big sins, you know. <laughs> so I'm okay, you know, I'm an average Christian, right? which is the thought that I had. The problem with that philosophy is I am justifying my uh, fault with my own action. So when a temptation or a big trial comes in life, it is only natural for me to rely on my own intellect, on my own strength to overcome that. And devil in his scheme might allow me to win a few small ones, uh, fortifying my belief that I can do this on my own. But we have to realize, right, against the spirit of darkness, we cannot win this battle on our own. We have to acknowledge that we need God. And we need God to fight our battles, you know. So today, um, we're going to look at three areas in life where we need, or if we allow God, we look for a better outcome rather than we take the fight on our own. So the three areas that we would be looking at is temptation, you know, our inner demons are our own giants, and troubles in life. So these are the three topics that we would probably spend some time and see from Scripture, uh, scenario where if you let God fight, what is the outcome might look like, right? So every one of us is aware of temptation, right? Um, and one good definition of temptation that I came across was temptation is a desire to engage in a short-term urge of enjoyment that threatens a long-term goal, which is very true, right? And also uh, the Hebrew word for temptation means try, through, or put to test. The scripture in James 1.13 says, um, when tempted, no one should say that God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away 
by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after their desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when full grown, gives birth to death. So from scripture, we can know that devil is constantly trying to tempt us based on our own evil desires, right? And when we give in to this temptation, right, when you lose the battle with the temptation, that's where sin is born, right? And if we keep sinning again and again, right? So if you keep on losing this battle, you would see that we slowly drift away from the presence of God, right? All these things come in between us and God, right? And we try to win this on our own and we start losing more and more, more and more. And then devil comes along and whispers in our ear, you know, that you are too weak. You are unholy. You cannot follow Jesus Christ. You know, you can never come out of this temptation. There is no victory for you in this one, right? Now, these thoughts are from devil. And scripture tells that he's father of lies, right? Remember prodigal son, right? So the scripture says that when he came to his senses, he said, you know, father, I have sinned against you in heaven. And I no longer... Uh, we deserve to be called your son, which is true, right? Which is true. That thought comes to our mind, right? But imagine if he had listened to his thought and not gone back. What we see is like when he overcomes that, with that realization, he goes back, the father comes running, right? And there is an acceptance and there is a deliverance which is there from God. So we need to overcome that, right? So that thought is not from God, right? And the problem, uh, what we face is like, the reason that we mainly fail is we are trying to fight in a wrong way, you know? So we are trying to fight with our own human and power. So sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but there is a better way to do that. You know? And that's God's way. And so take comfort, right? So um, that no one in this world is exempt from temptation. A lot of great people had even failed. Probably Jesus is the only one um, who overcame all his temptation. Uh, all other people, great people of God, right? Be it King David, um, all of them failed, right? All of them failed miserably, right? But there is redemption in God, right? So another thing when I was reading the scripture was like when I was reading when uh, Jesus was baptized um, and then right after he was baptized, um, he was tempted for 40 days. And then devil tries to tempt him. But when he's not giving in, the very last words reads, when the devil has finished all his tempting, he left him until an opportune time. So Jesus is done resisting, but devil is going away. But there's a catch. You know, he's not going away forever. No, he's going to come back <laughs> at the right time. So we have to be very careful, right? You know, that when you win a battle, that doesn't mean it's the war is won. So now what does scripture tell to deal with the temptations? You know, how do you deal with temptation? What is a better way to deal rather than on our own, right? Um, Apostle Paul, um, in his letter, he urges us to flee from temptation, right? So when temptation comes, do not even entertain it, right? So you read from Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But who is our sins sexually? Sins against their own body. Or in 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says that flee from evil desire of your youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. For some, it might be love of money, right? So uh, if you read the uh, first Matthew chapter six, from verse six onwards, godliness with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we can we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation, a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desire that plunge person into ruin and destruction. For love of money is a root for all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered away from faith and pierce themselves with many griefs. But you, men of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. So I was reading another commentary, right, where he 
the author says that if you dance around temptation long enough, you will fall in. So temptation is not something where you want to test your mental standing that, you know, that I can resist it long enough. No, don't give a foothold to devil, right? Whenever there is temptation comes your way, take help of scripture, take up the sword of God's word and defend and run away from there. You know, we all have our own battles. We all have our temptations, the sin that we want to overcome. And we might have failed many times, you know, like we try, we know that it is not right. We want to overcome it, but we fail because we try to uh, take it up our own strength. You know, we think that we can do it. And then sometimes we have this devil trying to deceive us that, you know, that unless you are clean, you cannot go in front of God. All this is his tricks. Just go to God as you are you know and just humble yourself ask god for uh, his deliverance right um, one thing that i can share from my personal experience is the moment you take up god on his word and say that lord i'm going to give up this sin i'm going to give up this bad habit you know i'm going to break away from this bondage right after you commit to god and your bonds are broken that's the time when you have the highest level of temptation. You know, you say that I don't want to do it in your name. Uh, I want to overcome this. The devil doesn't like it. And that's where you have the attack from the devil with all his force. And we can see a similar situation from Bible, right? So if, if you look uh, or read Exodus chapter 14, right? So this is a time when Israel has come out of Egypt, right? So after 430 years under the Egyptian rule, under bondage, God finally liberated them. Now they are just out of Egypt, out of their bondage. You um, can say whatever sin, symbolic to sin, what is bonding them, right? So they are out of that and they are camped near, uh, near a seashore. And at this moment, what they see is the entire might of Egyptian army coming along their way. Now, it's only human to see that, oh, there is no way out of it. You have got sea on one side, you cannot go there. And the army coming to recapture you, take you back into bondage again with all this might. You know, but if you read verse 13, this is what Moses said. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians that you see today, you will see, you will never see them again. The Lord fights for you. All you need is just to be still, you know. So when you read this scripture over here, so it says that God is going to fight your battle. But God is going to show a way, right? So here, if you read through Moses, God instructs Moses to raise his staff over Red Sea and the Red Sea parts, right? So God has shown you a way but it is still up to you to walk through this path. So God is true. He is going to deliver you. But here it tells that you only need to be still. But being still doesn't mean that you're not doing anything. Being still means just go under God's command. Take up God's banner and walk through the Red Sea. Now, this is not a normal walk, right? So like I said that I want to walk around the house or take a stroll. Imagine the scenario, right? You have your army coming in between. And you have Red Sea, which is parted. So you have walls of water on both the sides. And this is happening in the nighttime. You have to walk, right? So it's a walk of faith, what they're doing. And I have read this uh, scripture a couple of times. But only this time when I was preparing the message, God pointed me to the verse 19 and 20. You know, it reads, uh, let me read it for you. Then the angel of Lord, who had led, who have been traveling in front of the army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them, coming in between armies of Egypt and Israel. Just imagine this, right? So you have an angel which is going in front of you. When you're trying to flee from the temptation, it says that the pillar and the angel which were leading them, it went behind and it stood in between uh, people of 
um, Israel and the Egyptian army. Now, so one one analogy, right, which I was, um, which kind of caught my eye was, right, you know, when temptation and sin are like magnets, right? So what happens is like, if they're sticking together, that's where it has got the highest amount of pull or um, attraction to it. If you kind of take them apart, the further you move away, the attraction kind of goes down. And if you move enough, the pull is no longer there. So this is what is happening here, right? So God is in between Israelites and the army. And Israel is moving away. So God provides a way. God provides a way. But you have to walk. You have to walk away from your temptation. So God is fighting for your battle, but you have to do your part. You know, what an amazing assurance that we have in God. And further down, if you read uh, Corinthians 10, you know, I think we should memorize this. This is the verse which kind of helped me a lot. It says, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. No temptation has overtaken you except that is common for mankind. For God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so you can endure it. Now, this is a great promise. What God is trying to tell is like, whatever you are going through is normal. This is like for common for all mankind. This is nothing special to you. But he's saying that I am faithful and I will not let temptation come your way that you cannot handle. And even if temptation comes your way, I will provide a way out but you have to take it. Now, um, when I was coming through, I got a slide, uh, which was very nice, right? It said, it read, when temptation knocks, send Jesus to the door, you know? <laughs> so it, it is a simple statement, but it's profound, right? So if you let God fight for you, if Jesus is in your heart, right? You don't have to go and fight the temptation. When temptation comes, send Jesus. So you need to be firmly planted in God and don't take temptations on their own. Let God fight for you. Okay, now another big area in our life is, you know, we, we all have our own giants, our you know, inner demons. Um, unlike temptation, which scripture tells us, you know, free from this, uh, this battle, which is within us, you need to be on the offense here, right? So there you are trying to get away, but here, you need to march front. You need to attack this, right? So we are all familiar with the story of David and Goliath. The backdrop is uh, uh, Philistines have invaded. They have crossed over into Judah. So they are across the border, right? And army of Israel is going to face them. But there is Goliath. He is standing there, imposing, intimidating, and insulting the Israeli army, right? And if you read through the scripture, kind of list down his, you know, kind of height and his armor, his helmet, his uh, scaled armor, you know, the bronze things which are protecting him, javelin, all. So it paints a picture of like kind of someone you cannot win over, and that's how it looks, right? That's how it looks. Our own unbelief, um, like for me, right? My own personal things that I had to overcome is unbelief, lack of faith, self-righteousness, pride, pride. So, so if you see that these giants are invading, right? And what they're doing is like they are invading our spiritual life. And they are standing in the way. They need to be gotten rid of. But on our own, again, we probably might not be able to do that. You know, that's difficult, right? We see this giant and we come out to our human conclusion that it's like no way I can over conquer. Now, now comes David and David is looking through an eye of faith. And this is how he responds to him, you know? So if you read uh, first Samuel chapter 17, uh, verse 45, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of Lord Almighty. The God of army of armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you 
into my hand and I will strike you down. Cut off your head with this very day. I will give the carcass of Philistine army to the bird, birds and the wild animals, and the whole world will know that there's a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle belongs to the Lord, and he will give all of you into our hand. Very powerful uh, passage, right? And if you see, you can see David's faith. He is just a boy who is coming to visit a battlefield, and he is making bold claims, you know, that, and that can come from God, right? So David is not trying to be a macho or relying on his own strength. On his own strength, he's not even a part of the army, but here he is fighting, let God do the battle. He's just stepping in, right? So the question is, who defeated Goliath? Did God defeat Goliath or did David? The answer is God defeated Goliath through David, but it was David who stepped into the arena with faith. So let us take a step of faith. You know, let us bow down before God, be humble and say that, Lord, these are my giants. And on my own, I don't think I can defeat them, but help me to defeat them. You know, in Philippians 4, Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Of course, he's saying, I can do all things, but through Christ and through Christ's strength. And that's a key, right? So whatever might be uh, your inner giant, which is hindering your uh, walk with God, let's bow down, you know, take up God on his offer. Let the tell God that is your battle and just follow under his banner. Now, another area which we all deal with is troubles in life. Right, so we all face trials. We all face difficult situation, health challenges, you know, loss of a loved one, job loss, and if you are spiritual enough, we might face persecution for our faith. Now, the trouble suddenly kind of sneaks up on us, you know, like so. We we'll take an example from Second Chronicles chapter twenty. It talks about King Jehoshaphat, right? So what is happening here is like uh, all of a sudden uh, the armies of Moabites, Ammonites, and Menunites are all coming together to attack Judah. Right. So it's all of a sudden attack from both the sides, huge army, and they are totally unprepared. Right. So scripture says, alarmed, Jehoshaphat res resolved to inquire the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast over all Judah. Again, in verse twelve, which is there on the slide, he says. Oh God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Now, this is an attitude where he is just humbling himself, right? Uh, and he's acknowledging you know, his lack of power or control in this situation. And he's saying that our eyes are on you. But one thing to look here is you have to know that King Jehoshaphat was a righteous man. So if you go back a few chapters and you read in 2 Chronicles 17, it says in verse 3, the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he followed the ways of his father David before him. So long before this calamity stuck, King Jehoshaphat was a righteous man. And when trouble comes, it is only natural for us to go to God. And what happens is mostly in our life, it becomes a last resort, right? But God wants to be our first resort, right? As soon as he saw that the army was coming powerless, he went straight to the Lord. So whenever we have situations in life, um, we have to not resort to our human uh, abilities, but take, up on, take it up on God's name, right? Another thing if you look is, at some point, right, in, in God's infinite wisdom, he does allow us to go through difficult times, you know. So God does allow, you know, some troubles come our way. So if you read here in verse 10, it says, But now the men of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, 
whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from destroying them. So you see that these people who are coming against Judah are the very same people which God said that, you know, that when they were claiming the promised land to leave. So in a way, in a way, what I'm trying to tell is the troubles that come our way are kind of God allowed, right? So as difficult it might be, and we need to take God's help. We need to let God take it up. So this is what is the response of God when uh, the whole of Judah and King Joshua and everybody is praying, right? So the spirit comes upon, uh, I forgot the name, the person who is praying, but, and this is what God told that per through that person. Listen, King Joseph, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but Lord's. Tomorrow, march down against them. You will, they will be climbing by the pairs of, pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeru. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your position, stand firm, and see the deliverance of Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go down, face them tomorrow. Now, God told them, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I'll fight for you. But he still asked them, you know, to march out. You know, still asked them to take up their post at the fight. Right. And scripture says that they went out giving thanks to the Lord, saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love and youth forever. And if you read down, God set ambush between the armies of Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir. So these armies which are attacking, they kind of mistook one another for enemy and kind of destroyed each other and not one was left. And so this difficult situation of an attack, impending attack on Judah, turned out to be a blessing because it says that when all of them were dead, there was so much plunder that it took them three days to collect it all. Now, and again, it says that if you see that when the men of Judah came to the place to look over the desert, to look towards the vast army, they only saw dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. Now, um, also, if you read the letter from Peter, like first Peter chapter five, right? So this is, he is writing to a church which is under persecution and under trouble, right? He says, humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time and cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you, right? So what I'm trying to tell is rely on God when trouble comes your way, right? Um, and fall under God's command and lead into the battle, right? So don't misunderstand me when I'm quoting this and saying that whatever is your uh, trouble in life, you know, it will be all according to your will, no. So all I'm saying is like, when you take up God's offer and go under his banner, God's will will be done. God's will will be done. And sometime it might be different from what your heart desires. Sometimes it will be different from the timeline that you have, you know. Um, we pray really hard for loved ones when they're battling a disease, but sometimes they lose the battle. Sometimes we lose a job and we need deliverance, but we've been waiting, it is not coming our way, you know. So there are tough situations in life, but if you let God fight your battle, so the peace and uh, the deliverance that comes from God is the strength that is going to give you to go through that situation, you know. So if you look in the scripture for in God's infinite wisdom, God did allow Job to be tested and lose everything. In Job's case, God blessed him double share of the portion that he lost. Again, if you see, God did allow Stephen to be stoned to death, but he showed him the glory of heaven in this case, right? Um, in case of Abraham, he had to wait for 25 years for God to fulfill his promise. 
Now, uh, we also see it in case of uh, Apostle Paul, right? So Paul prayed for, you know, a request to his, he, he claims that he was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment him. And he says that I prayed, not one, but two, but three times. He pleaded with God, take it away from me. But God's response was, um, my grace is sufficient for you. You know, in your weakness, my power uh, is made perfect. So we see different scenarios where God's response is beyond our understanding. And I was trying to um, put a good closure on this and I was not able to, but the portion that Jinu read kind of sums it up for me, right? So this is what God is telling, right? So if you read the scripture portion that Jinu read in the starting, right? So it reads, don't you know, have, have you not heard the Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. You know, even youth grow tired and weary. Young men may stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagle. They will run and not go weary. They will walk, but not be faint. So what God is telling is like, if you let God fight your battle, right? If the outcome is even not according to what you want, but he will give you the strength to endure. He will give you the strength to come through that. So with that, let's pray, you know, and let's give our battles to God. Let's take our temptation, lay, lay it at his feet, take up his uh, offer to defeat our giant, you know, and, and just pray that right? whatever difficulties that we are facing, that God give us a strength. So I, I would like to he play a song for like two minutes. And this basically is a very well-known song, Battle Belongs to the Lord. And while this song is going on, I request each one of you to pray. Humble yourself before God. I don't know what difficulties and trial that you are going right now. God knows. So humble yourself, take up on God's offer, lay out your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Give me one minute. 